Hey everybody, this is just going to be a short video about the process of swapping out the clip-on bar risers on a Thruxton 1200 or 1200R. So this is a 2016 1200R. As you can see, the process is already done. I, uh, I finished it up a few days ago. So I'm going to provide a few uh, short clips that I took during the process and provide a bit of post-mortem discussion. So I hope you find this helpful. Um, in particular, I want to take note here, this is a Thruxton with a fairing, which uh, offers some particular uh, kinds of challenges with, uh, with installing higher clip-ons. So I hope this is helpful. So the manual would have you remove the tank first and then you would have actually end up removing the headlight, the headlight assembly, uh, probably I think also the instrument cluster. Uh, but the, that's the thing is that the manual is telling you how to remove the top triple clamp, which in the manual is called the upper yoke or the top yoke, depending on where you look. Um, I didn't have to remove the instrument cluster or the helmet or the tank. So the approach I took just didn't because I knew I didn't need to swap out the top triple clamp. Now I was going to have to do that. I in fact ordered and received uh, a kit to put on a superbike bar, but uh, as soon as I got it I knew I was hoping that there might be able to be figure well, some way to Frankenstein it on, but it wasn't happening. It was going to definitely be too high for the uh, fairing. It wasn't going to work. And I wanted to keep the fairing. So, um, I said, so one of the first things you're going to want to do is remove the fairing. It's not that hard. There's only like five or six screws that hold the thing on. Like There's more than that. There's five holding it on from the bottom. Uh, there's also then uh, these screws that are go into these goofy rubber uh, nut stays that are interesting, but I'm afraid they're not that easy to work with. And then, uh, then there's these little little plug on the side that you just pop it out. There. Right. Now the headlight's going to stay where it is. You're just removing the plastic from the frame underneath. Then underneath what you want to do is you want to investigate and look for yourself and figure out where all the cables and wires are being held in. Because there's plenty of slack as long as you remove the, the uh, zip ties or the shrouds like this that hold that stuff nice and tight to your bike so it's not going to snag or get caught or flop around. So that's one step number two really is to go and loosen up all of the cables and wires that lead up to the handlebars so they all can move around easily. So I'm just doing a quick sort of slow video of what things looked like as soon as I took the fairing off as a record for myself so when I put it back together yeah a couple of things I took note of see that it sticks up here it doesn't over here so it's not like we shouldn't expect this to be flush over here. This is going to be it. So my my theory here is that I won't have to drop the fork legs down. I won't actually have to remove the uh, ABS sensor because I think I can get the top yoke off. It'll come with all the instrument clusters. So if I'm able to yeah, that's kind of, well, I'm not taking it off, so as long as it's not hooked on to anything, I should be able to like lift the whole triple clamp up, but I'm afraid the cables are not going to allow I'm happy to report my theory was correct. Um, as it turns out, you do not have to like drop the fork tubes down and all that just to get the triple clamp to slide off. Um, it took a little doing, you know, this and that, and false starts here and there, but yeah, it worked. One thing that happened is on the right side here, there's a there's a screw that uh, goes right through here, right there, and that broke off, and so now is the bottom of the screw sticking out right here. Now that's not going to be a problem because the new triple clamp 
cramp does not require that. Um, but whether it's going to get in the way or not is another question. I might have to grind that off. Is, uh, the old um, risers, bar risers, had took a little bit of uh, encouragement to slide off, but they came right off. So, yeah, good to go. All right, so this is a clarification here. This shroud screws on right there. There's a hole. Goes through that hole there. See? But also, there's this little tab right here. And on the bottom, there's a hole. And that hole lines up with that. Okay? Not sure. Now here's the thing. This hole does not get a screw. It gets those two little plugs. They like snap together. So this is this is a plastic rivet, and once I, I put it together, now it doesn't want to come apart, and I don't really care anymore because it's kind of useless. Like unless you've got the machine, the uh, rivet gun to snap that in, it's really not possible to use that anymore. So I've um, dispensed with that and just put that little zip tie, a little black zip tie in place. Now this is all behind the fairing anyway. Nobody but me knows that's there, and you know. My point is. I don't think you need to stress about that. The fact is, uh, there was only one of these. There's there's one on each side, but when I took it apart, there was no rivet on one side. Now, did it fall out? Or did the previous mechanic just lose it? Or I'm going to zip tie this one on just like the other one. Right up front, right up on the frame. Right there, that one. It's got a, I don't remember what size Torx bit. It's a little one. Uh, but it's in a spot where maybe that's why they want you to remove the tank because you can't really you see I actually nicked the paint here a little bit it's uh, doesn't it's a reflection there you see it just grazed it and that was using just a allen wrench you can get at okay so in hindsight I would recommend not removing that screw as uh, it really causes some problems and it really doesn't give you any slack to speak of so it's not worth it don't bother Okay, yeah, so this is one other thing. So I've got the mirror back on and everything, and it looks pretty sad. But the fact is, the original uh, bars, they uh, come with this, that that end cap screws into, and it, it gets a pin that goes through there. There's a pin right over there. That pin has to come out in order to get this thing out, but at the end of the day, it's useless to me because it won't fit. It's too small to fit in these hollowed out uh, bars. So there is a plastic plug that they provide, that uh, Apex provided. I just drilled a hole in that, screwed that screw into it. Now the fact is, these mirrors are tight on here. I don't think they're going anywhere. Famous last words, I guess. But And so, I don't know, I'm going to explore that, but for now... I don't think they're going anywhere. Use <laughs> it. So, as of today, we got these a couple of uh, bar ends from Apex. So, should uh, work well with this bike. Add a little weight and uh, be nice. Ones. But realized they are not what I thought they were. I thought this whole thing like inserted in here because it kind of resembles what is actually in there. But uh, no, this is a bar end that goes on the outside. Like it, it's not compatible with what I've got here. Like I, without doing damage here and not using this, uh, it, it's gonna, it's gonna not work. It won't work. So I'm still just riding with <laughs> bolted on mirrors and. Uh, this is into a plastic plug. I misspoke when I said rubber. This was a bit of a moment of truth. Uh, after I started getting the fairing back on, first thing I did was check to see if the uh, brake reservoir will clear. And indeed it will not, just the way that things are sitting right now. But it just grazes, just, just grazes, pushes it up just a, maybe a millimeter. So yeah, I have to adjust the uh, fairing when I put it back on, just a smidge, I think I should be able to get it to work, but 
Yeah, it's close. So I was able to adjust the fairing enough so that the brake reservoir doesn't contact it when you turn the bars. Uh, in the upper left there, you see that actually there's a washer I inserted as a spacer to, uh, to make sure that. Well, I had the, uh, triple, the tip triple clamp off. I drilled a hole in the cap and installed a ram mount. And that was a sub-project that I uh, did at the same time. What I ended up with, uh, I'm real happy with them in the end. I mean, basically, um, I gained a significantly better seating position for me. It feels a lot more natural. It feels like I'm no longer, like, way stretched over the tank, uh, which is what it felt like before. It felt like I was kind of reach, reaching forward too far. Um, so, happy about the build quality and about the fitment. It fit right on there. And like I said, all I got to do is remove the top triple clamp while it's still connected to everything else. There's enough slack in all the cables that you can easily do that. You're not going to have so these so far have made a really remarkable difference. But um, I'm planning a several hundred mile ride this weekend, and I guess we'll know for sure then. I'll report afterward. Well, this is just a kind of quick look at what tools I used in this project. Which I got this lift recently from Harbor Freight. Uh, cheap and really, really effective for lifting a motorcycle. Up. Three thumbs, five thumbs on that. But, uh, you know, just a few just random things. Cable ties of different sizes. You're going to need a couple of wrenches, a needle nose, um, eight millimeter socket, uh, five and six millimeter um, uh, Allen wrenches. And I've got uh, sockets here. And this is a three millimeter Allen wrench. I said I didn't know as a little, it's that's one. Um, you're gonna need a, a, a cutter of some kind of knife. Uh, <laughs> I have a magnet there because I dropped a screw and tried to fish it out. Um, you're gonna need a torque wrench. Okay, so having put several hundred miles on these things, now I can say definitely it is improvement in the seating position on this bike. I feel a lot more comfortable. Uh, it is still a sporting position, but I'm not reaching and stretching to uh, reach those uh, low clip-ons like I was previously. And it just feels a lot more natural and a better position for me to be in in this bike. So I'm really happy that I did it. Um, I rode uh, about 800 miles this last weekend, including one day that was also almost 400 miles. And this sitting position uh, was significantly better, made it a lot easier for me to get through that. I also uh, added a, an Airhawk uh, seat pad, which I've done a different review of, and I think this combination made it possible for me to put on that kind of mileage uh, with this bike, where I really never would have been able to do that before. So I'm real happy with the outcome, and I think they look great. I think the uh, Apex uh, bar risers are a nice addition for this bike.